Hi everybody, Matthew 504, 2024. This is a short explainer video augmenting the instructions and the questions in Big Homework. So Big Homework is big. It's due August 30th, 2024 and four in the afternoon. It's done in pairs. Uh, the suggested way to work is that per question within the pairs, there is a person that is leading and there's a person that's reviewing. Both the leader and the reviewer obviously contribute but the leader should kind of initiate things and the reviewer can add um, to the solution, improve it, et cetera. It's important that the reviewers and the leaders know all questions in the end and are responsible jointly. When you submit, uh, we are not interested in knowing who is leading, who is reviewing. At the end of the day, it's joint work of both um, submitters. It's always in pairs, only in exceptional circumstances if somebody has some specific special permission. Uh, then you can do it individually. And if we don't uh, manage to find a final pair or two, then there'll be a triplet. The submission format. So you submit uh, on these Jupyter notebooks where there are actually places for you to uh, write the solutions, either textually or computer code or combination. Um, that's what you do. These are going to be on your GitHub repository. Um, question 10 deals with the GitHub repository. And you also then print everything as a PDF file, put in one PDF file and upload a PDF file. That's to Blackboard. So PDFs are for Blackboard. Jupyter Notebooks are for the GitHub repo. When you submit in Blackboard, you also put a link to your GitHub repo. This submission is in all submissions. You should also have an audio recording, not less than 30 seconds, not more than three minutes, please. Say how you felt about the assignment, uh, say what tools you used in case you used them as described here, but also uh, importantly, state that this is your work, your pair's work, uh, if that is the case. So take ownership of that and state that um, with a voice recording, okay? You can, of course, use course help, consult with others, etc. but at the end of the day, what you're submitting needs to be your work. So there are four uh, points just given like that for following instructions. Some students on the first submission or two don't follow instructions, uh, but no need. So please just follow instructions. It also helps us streamline the marking. 16 standard questions in total. That's six points each. Okay, some questions are easier, some are harder. Keep in mind that even if a, if a question is short, it doesn't mean it's easy. And if it's long in the text, it doesn't mean it's hard. Uh, sometimes the... Um, text and text and equations, et cetera, just give background information for the question, especially in the latter questions of the homework. The additional bonus question 17 is uh, summarizing Dr. Megan Dawson's perspective seminar. Uh, so that's um, 10 points that you can quite easily get by attending the lecture and then summarizing the perspective seminar as described in question 17. All right, so just what to expect. In question one, um, you'll do some LaTeX formatting, um, some variation of this. You also do some markdown, then you'll do some HTML, okay? Only very basic things within your Jupyter notebook. Um, question two is really instructive. So even though it's long, it's supposed to be, it's really kind of an introductory question. Uh, it's recommended that both people from the pair really take their time to go over this and understand because it's, it's kind of you go and you step-by-step step, learn a few things uh, associated with Julia in the very simple context of a quadratic equation. Question three is kind of neat. So it's related to, um, it's related to this thing again, uh, only when a0 is zero, zero, a1 is one, a2 is two, et cetera, okay? And it turns out that this value of x, this uh, continued fraction is approximately uh, this thing, okay? And there's some links related to it, et cetera. So what we do is we uh, check that it is approximately this thing. We give you some code for it. Uh, this here is a recursive function definition. This is a function definition, okay? And then we run this recursion and we get this. But here you've got some uh, things to do with this function, experiment, etc. cetera. Uh, and it gets a bit uh, more complex. Um, 3A, 3B, I see this should be 3C and 3D. We'll update this, okay? But that's that's a bit more um, complex. 
Question four uh, is a standard question, but it's kind of very important for your uh, basic kind of computer engineering, computer science knowledge. It's just taking a string and converting it to uh, a string that has a binary or a hexadecimal number and converting it to the numerical value. That's kind of the essence. Dealing with that will kind of put you in the mindset both of string parsing and in uh, the mindset of kind of just uh, binary values and hexadecimal values both of which are, are fundamentally important. Uh, question five deals with this kind of um, number theory concept, primitive uh, adapt abundant numbers. So you actually need to read what that means and define it and uh, then do a bit of coding. At first you'll do the easier thing, which is taking kind of a divisors function from primes.jl, but then you'll write your own. Question six is an all time course classic. Uh, it's been in all of the years. Goldbach conjecture, uh, you get code that works, but it's it's horribly inefficient in the way that it works. And, and you can't create the plot like this, say up to a million with this code, but you need to think what's inefficient, what you can do to improve, what you can do to actually make the similar type of plot associated with Goldbach conjecture up to, up to a million. So enjoy that question. Question seven is completely new. It's a different concept. Time to speak to a large language model. So here you're asked to install Olama, which is a way of running large language models on your machine. Um, you're asked to install this on your machine and then to communicate with Olama via localhost 127.001 via this uh, curl, C-O-R-L. Okay, so you're actually gonna send stuff from the command line. This is not Julia, this is command line to the machine. But then you're supposed to emulate the same type of thing in Julia. And finally, you're supposed to put it in a loop to kind of make your own Julia running very simple kind of chat bot. Okay, it doesn't have the full functionality, but that's what it does. Question eight is also a classic. Uh, this is, by the way, the list of uh, all the people whom have ever contributed to the core staff, uh, as far as I know. Um, and it, do it deals with the sorting, fundamental concept. So some things are a bit uh, standard, but then you're supposed to look up the quicksort algorithm and implement it in Julia. Now, since we're in the age of LLMs here, actually take the pseudocode from um, the Wikipedia, put it in, a, in an LLM, uh, not this very simple LLM that you'll use here, but an industrial LLM, ChatGPT or Anthropic or something like that. Okay. And have it help you uh, make that code, but it might not be perfect. You might need to nudge it and adjust it, etc. But at the end of the day, you'll want it to work. And finally, here you do some numerical comparisons, uh, co comparisons of, of uh, running times, no numerical. Question nine moves us to linear algebra make matrix multiplication. Some students find this hard, but it's kind of fundamentally important that there are, in a sense, four very basic ways to multiply matrices. They all give the same result, and you're implementing these four ways. Okay. When you move to question 10, this is all about setting up your big GitHub repo. Please take a lot of time and care in doing this exactly as specified. So uh, you'll get instructions and, and support of GitHub later uh, down the weeks of the course, way before the submission here. Uh, question 11 deals with a few Unix command. It's way fewer than what we would have liked, um, but it just gets you going a bit on, on Unix uh, type stuff, before. so you do. And question 12 is all about string parsing. HTTP you already use earlier in this, uh, LLM question here, right? But still, uh, what you're going to do is just use a cool HTTP file. You'll actually pull a Jupyter notebook. You'll work with JSON a bit and then with CSV files. Okay. So some students found this difficult, but this, this question is actually important from kind of a career practical perspective. Then we get into the more numerical aspect. So question 13 is quite standard and deals with numerical derivatives. And question 14 deals with Markov chains and linear algebra. If you do know what Markov chains are, it might be a bit easier, but even if you don't, everything is specified here. So don't let all the uh, text and equations scare you. It should be quite specified and of course get help if you need it. Okay. Now questions 15 and question 16 
are the uh, numerical solution of differential equation questions. Again, you'll see a lot of text and equations, but the questions are not as hard as appears from the text and equations. You don't have to derive every little bit and thing. There are only a few, well, several steps that you need to follow to answer these questions. And that's question 17, the perspective seminar. So we promised big, yes, big homework is big. Um, we hope that you enjoy this process, even though it might take a bit of time and good luck, work well.